Let's bring in Rashir Sharma. He's chief global strategist and head of emerging markets at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. His latest column for the Financial Times is the billionaire boom, how the super rich soaked up COVID cash. And Rashir, thanks, thanks for joining us. When I first read that, thanks. I thought, oh my gosh, he's going to make some ties about how billionaires illicitly got some of this money or maybe they stole the COVID cash that was going to others. But what you're really talking about is that huge flood of money that came out from central banks and, and I guess the opposite of trickle down. This is a suck up sort of theory. Exactly. So I think that the headline may have been a bit uh, misleading there, but I think that the whole point of that piece was this, and this is something I've been tracking for the last 10 years, is just the staggering wealth increase that's taking place at the top. Um, that it took nearly 20 years for the wealth of billionaires to double. And then just last year, the wealth of billionaires went up more than 50%, uh, from $8 trillion to $13 trillion. Uh, and I don't think it's any coincidence that you had $9 trillion of uh, monetary stimulus around the world. So we know who have been the big beneficiaries of that with massive asset price inflation. And the number of new billionaires that was minted last year was a record high. So this is just a staggering outcome that we have seen or one of the big side effects of the stimulus. How does that play into the very um, contentious sort of wealth inequality discussions that are being uh, played out politically? Because when you see the wealthy get wealthier, it happened because the central banks were trying to prevent the economies from collapsing. But by putting all that liquidity out there, as you mentioned, the assets get inflated and the people who own the assets are the richest people. Yeah, I think that this is one of the biggest contradictions out there. And, you know, something for the progressives and liberals in particular to ponder because they want easy money policies. They want interest rates uh, to remain low and the Fed and other central banks to remain very supportive to pay for the social programs and get lower unemployment. On the other hand, they're the ones also who are uh, most charged up by uh, what's happening in terms of wealth inequality. So I really feel that they need to think about this contradiction. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is one of those columns I'd written earlier as well as to why the liberals love the 1%, uh, which is that uh, it's the irony of this, that they are very sort of angry about the wealth inequality, and yet those very policies that they back, I think, leads to an increase in wealth inequality. Now, the good news, of course, I think, which I mentioned in the piece as well, is that a lot of the billionaire wealth is still being created in what I define as productive industries, the so-called good billionaires, tech, manufacturing. That's what's leading the way. So that's what's keeping, I think, this uh, anger from turning into uh, an outright populist revolt. But still, the size of the billionaire class around the world now, especially in the United States, with billionaires now 20% of, uh, of the U.S. economy in terms of their wealth, that, I think, is something which we have to keep in mind as to what sort of backlash that could trigger. If, if tech and entrepreneur leaders are the billionaires who are the good billionaires, who are the bad billionaires? Well, it's hard for me to uh, say, like, anyone uh, specifically, but I'd say that my entire point is that if you look at the industries which tend to be more prone to cronyism, to government favors, rent-seeking behavior, such as um, mining, energy, uh, construction, real estate. That's what I say. And now, of course, not all billionaires in those industries are bad. And, uh, but my point is, if you get too many billionaires coming out of those industries, uh, around the world, I've seen that's when a bit of a backlash develops. So therefore, in Russia and Mexico, when you get too many billionaires coming from those industries, you find that the popular anger is much greater than in countries even such as the United States, when you have a lot of billionaires coming up from tech and manufacturing, and also when the wealth is self-made compared to when, you know, when the wealth is inherited. So I think that's a very important distinction to make, that one is not only what's the size of the billionaire class, but two, in terms of how they're creating their wealth. And when you have a lot of wealth being created in so-called industries which are more prone to cronyism uh, or even corruption compared to the genuine entrepreneurial industries, that's when you have bigger problems. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.